So let's walk through how you go through and actually download and set up Visual Studio and the AdventureWorks LT database. So from within Blackboard, you'll want to start by going to the Microsoft SQL Server Express and Tools link underneath Final Project Resources. Clicking that link will take you out to the SQL Server Express download page. And you'll want to most likely choose the 64-bit English download. You'll want to drop down here and then choose Express with Tools. And that will download SQL Express as well as SQL Management Studio tools. Uh, click Download and your download will begin. Um, it's about a gig download, so it'll take a little while for it to complete. Uh, once it's done, you'll want to go ahead and launch it. Once the installer finally launches, you'll want to choose New SQL Server Standalone Installation. So we'll check that box. I will warn you that throughout this process, you're going to end up with a lot of waiting screens where SQL goes through and checks your system for the necessary components. So be prepared for a lot of clicking and waiting. I will want to accept the terms. It's up to your discretion if you want to send Microsoft data about your use of SQL. We'll click Next. And we're going to now check for updates. And there are two additional updates that will be included as part of our installation. So we'll click Next. And those updates will now be downloaded. So for my installation, it prompted me to restart the computer. So from this screen, I will choose which features I want to install. So I want the database engine service. We do not need SQL Server replication. Uh, we'll leave the client tools. We want the management tools. And SQL connectivity SDK is fine. And also check the box for local DB. Uh, that may be used um, at some point later. So we'll go ahead and hit next. SQL will verify all of the necessary functionality needed. And it'll ask you how you want to set up your instance of SQL. Since this is SQL Express by default, it'll recommend that you set up a named instance called SQL Express. Um, Quite honestly, that's perfectly fine for this case, and I'm going to leave it this way as the default just for consistency with the rest of the lectures. So we'll hit Next. So these are our service account configurations. We'll leave those at the default and hit Next. Um, I prefer to do mixed mode authentication, and you can choose a password of your, your fit. Um, Mixed mode will allow you to connect to the database even without being logged in locally, and this is especially useful for your applications to be able to connect to the database with their own accounts. So we'll leave that there. Uh, the data directories ha talks about where the data will be saved. Uh, you can leave these, or if you maybe are limited on disk space, you can change where those are located. I'm getting an error with my server config. Ah, my password's not strong enough. Hit next. And we'll go ahead and hit next again. The system will verify that everything is in place and perform the installation. All right, and we're back. So now we need to actually get into SQL Management Studio and make sure that our SQL Server was installed. So if you go to your Start menu, and whether you're running Windows 7, 8, or 10, this is all the same. Uh, type SQL Management, and you should get SQL Server Management Studio presented to you as a recommendation. You want to click on that. And Management Studio will launch may need to go through a little bit of config. When it finally comes up, it'll come up 
and it'll present you a link to your server slash SQL Express. Now yours probably says Windows Authentication. Uh, my recommendation is to switch to SQL Server Authentication. Your username in this case will be SA and then whatever password you set during installation. If you have trouble logging in this way, um, you can actually flip it back to Windows Authentication and you can log in that way and you can go through and actually do some adjustments. If you have to log in with the Windows Authentication, you can right click on your desktop, or I'm sorry, right click on your server, go to properties, and you'll want to click on security on the left hand side. From there you'll want to change your authentication mode to SQL Server and Windows Authentication. That'll allow you to be able to log in with your SA account. Once that is set, you'll want to then go to the Securities folder, Logins, and then go down to the SA account and right-click on that and go to Properties, and you can set or reset your SA password appropriately. Um, depending on who you are and how you want things set up, um, you may want to uncheck the enforce password policy and uncheck the enforce password expiration that way your password doesn't end up expiring on you and when you uncheck the enforce policy you have the freedom to basically pick whatever password you want and there's no um, default Microsoft policies that are kind of put in place to make sure you have a strong password so to each his own all right so under databases there is currently no database so we need to get AdventureWorks installed now to do that, we want to go back to Blackboard, and we will want to click on the AdventureWorks LT 2012 script download. So clicking on that will download the AdventureWorks uh, zip script package from Microsoft. And once that's downloaded, we'll want to go and unzip that package. I actually have this downloaded previously. Um, but the steps that you take to unzip it is simply right click, extract all, and then you'll want to extract it into downloads or wherever you downloaded it from. So I will go ahead and open up this extracted folder. And what I'm looking for is I'm looking for this install, um, well, it kind of looks like install, it's in INSTAW. LTDB. So this is the installation script for the AdventureWorks database. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to drag the, actually I'm just going to double click on it and it should launch inside of SQL Management Studio. Perfect. Now with this script there are a few things that you need to adjust or change. Uh, the first thing that we'll need to do is go up underneath Query, and we want to go down and choose SQL CMD mode. And you'll see here that there's a warning that says the script must be run in SQL CMD mode inside SQL Management St St Studio, if I can say it. Um, since we're in Studio, that's the first thing you need to check. The second thing that we're going to need to double check and adjust is that this source path is the path where that INST da 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 file lives. So for me, it's under my C users, Kevin downloads AdventureWorks. So I'm going to copy that path right there out of the address bar and I'm going to paste it in here into this line. And paste, and then I'm going to add that trailing slash back. Now, where I'm going to be installing SQL to, or my uh, database to is may or may not be this path so I'm going to check here so I'm going to open that window back up and let's see I'm going to be looking at c colon slash program files slash Microsoft SQL server enter and then ms sql 11 dot c and mine says sql express so I need to change this to see SQL Express and then double click MS SQL and data so that'll be my final path and yes continue so this will be the folder where my MDF and LDF files will go for AdventureWorks alright so I'll go ahead and close that 
and those are the only settings that we should need to change so we will go ahead and run this script and attempting to run my script I got an error incorrect syntax was encountered while parsing set var alright well as all good IT people do let's go ahead and do a quick Google search on that and see what we come up with All right, so first one, SQL Server 2012, incorrect syntax. Yep, that's us. So Stack Overflow, great website, good community of Q&A type things when it comes to programming. So that looks very similar to what we're trying to run. This person's in SQL CMD mode. And the answer is do not put semicolons at the end of CMD lines. This is not T-SQL. So if we flip back over to SQL, sure enough, there are semicolons at the end of our line. So we'll delete those and we'll try to execute again. Um, and occasionally I get that error um, when things are kind of hung up. So let's go ahead and try running this one more time. Oh, guess we lost our connection to our own SQL server. All right, great. So everything is now up and running and installed. So if I come back over here and I click on databases and then I choose the refresh, there's our refresh. There's our AdventureWorks database. Let's see if we can expand some of these. And let's go ahead and just look at the customers table. Right click, select top 1000 rows. And there's no data. Let's come back down and look through our messages. Cannot bulk load because cannot be opened. Access is denied. Now that is most likely because it is underneath my user folder. So let's do this. Let's go back. And if you're running into the same error, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into this folder and actually not into the folder, but I'm going to right click on that folder and go to properties. I'm going to modify the security permissions and I'm going to say edit. And I'm going to say add. And I'm going to add there's an everyone group in Windows, and I'm going to give everyone read permissions to this folder, just this folder, and hit OK. We'll go back here, and the easiest solution to this, since there's no data right now, is I'm going to right click on the database, choose delete, and then hit OK, and that will actually delete the database from my machine. And it says the drop failed because it is in use. Well, it's probably because I have it open. So I know it's kind of hard to read on my screen, but this says delete backup and restore history, and this says close existing connections. I'm going to close existing connections and hit OK. That'll force any existing connections to be closed or dropped, and then everything is deleted. All right, so let's go ahead and try rerunning this script one more time. Execute. There's that transport level error. Let me refresh here. And let's run it one more time. All right. Looks like we have better results. Let's see if we have any errors. Nope, but there are rows being inserted, keys being created, and everything looks good. So if we jump databases, adventure works, tables, and we go to the customer table again, say sh select top 1000, and we have rows of data. So our adventure works database is now set up and ready for use.